Welcome to Connections at Home, our online video initiative bringing together the Methodist churches in Pontefract and Nottingley, Central, Middlegate and Rope Walk. Today's online church reflection is offered by Reverend Naomi, one of our circuit ministers, and the video also includes photography by Michael Scorgi from Middlegate and prayers from the Coco Project and the young people at Rope Walk Methodist Church. Naomi refers to two readings uh, in her reflection and I'm going to read from Psalm 16 now. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Dear friends and church family, it has been another week of grim news of many people dying and others infected by coronavirus. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families and the friends of those people and may the peace of the risen Christ be with them. The Bible readings that are set for this week seems as if they are describing what is happening in our world today. The right of the Psalm 16 verses 1 is starting by saying, Keep me safe, O God, for you are my refuge. He continues to refer to God as his person and his cup. It is since everything was not going well in his life. He needed a refuge and he found that refuge in God. The gospel also tells us, a story of a group of people who are on lockdown. Like us, it seems like they, under, they have had a crazy day that, and, and they started that morning with the confusion at the tomb. The women had gone to pay their final respect to their hero, Jesus, only to find an empty tomb and to be told that he is not, not, not dead, but alive. He has been raised from the dead. They had met an angel who had given them a message to take to his followers that he was alive. All that running up and down and being tiring and confusing. It seems like the friends of Jesus had not fully believed them. For even now, in the evening, the whole team of his followers are locked down behind their doors. What were they thinking? How were they feeling after that devastating news of the cruel murder of their Linda? Were they talking and discussing and considering the message of some of the disciples and the women? Maybe they could not know how he could have been raised from the dead. So let's hear that reading from John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
and the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you don't, do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hand, and put my finger where his nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them, though the doors were locked. Jesus came and stood among them, saying, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. And then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book but they are written that you may see and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The feelings of death, death and hopelessness was all around them. The same feelings that come over us every time when we listen to the news each day. The room they were in were filled with fear and confusion. Maybe they were debating about whether the resurrection tale from the women was true after all. Was it possible? They had been shocked beyond belief. The devastation of what people are going through today is very traumatic. It's not only lives that are being lost, but the people are losing their livelihoods. People are losing their jobs and their businesses. There is a sense of hopelessness. Can we ever come out of this? So it is not only the literal lockdown, but many people are locked behind doors of fear, of doubt and hopelessness. The gospel reading that we have today from John 20, 19 to 31, tells us that Jesus stepped into their world behind the locked doors. He came to where they were. The reason Christ entered among them as they handled their in fear and greeted them. Peace be with you. Through this greeting, Jesus is offering them peace in the state of fear. The peace that Jesus is offering is bound with this encounter with him. This is not the quiet peace of the status quo, of life as normal. This is an undestructive yet reassuring peace that comes because he is risen from the dead. Because he lives, all fear is gone and we can face tomorrow. This is the kind of peace that comes when you know all will be alright no matter what is going on around your life. This is the, the, the peace what Paul referred to as peace that passes all human understanding. This is the kind of peace that brings security. This is the peace that brings hope. Hope that everything will be alright. The followers of Jesus like us who are afraid of what will become of them. They wondered, they were wondering what their future held. 
like us, they were framed and held him back by doubt. But like he appeared to them during those hour of their doubt and fear, he appears to us today and then declares the same greetings. Peace be with you. His forever promise is not to fear, for he will never leave us nor forsake us. Although sometimes we feel, it appears as if he has forsaken us. The disciples he felt the same, but he came to them not once, but many times with the same greetings. Peace be with you. God steps into our hour of, of darkness and the hour of need and he breathes into us the message of hope, the message of peace. He doesn't leave anyone out, of, out, even those who are doubting, like Thomas. He comes to us and says, Here I am, touch me, and peace be with you. He fills us with hope and he sends us out with the same message of hope to share with those around us. As we are alive today, God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, is calling and filling us with the, with the peace of God and the hope so that each can be a messenger of hope to those around us. Let us keep praying for God that he will save our world for Christ is alive today. And may the peace of God that possess all human understanding continue to keep your hearts and minds. I'm here to remind you that God loves you with an everlasting love. He really does. Peace be with you.
And so let's pray together. And as a prayer, we're going to use this video made by the COCO Project at Girls' Brigade. Unprecedented, isolation, uncertain, quarantine, lockdown, coronavirus, pandemic. These words swirl through my mind as I sit at home and wait. The news is full of death and statistics. My Insta's full of activities to keep us busy while we're stuck indoors. There's no escape from the fact that there is no escape. So I sit, safe indoors, and dream of normality. On a walk, I see rainbows drawn by children in windows. I remember that a rainbow is a symbol of hope. And suddenly, I find myself hoping some things won't ever just be normal again. I hope I won't take for granted the gift of a hug from my best mate. I'll make sure I smile at a stranger in the street and wave hello at my neighbours. A trip to Mackey D's will be a privilege, not a right. As we'll find in the supermarket shelves groaning with food and loo rolls. I hope I won't take for granted time spent with my family. Being able to feel the sun or the rain on my face and the breeze blowing in my hair. I'll say thank you to supermarket staff, to postmen, to key workers, to NHS workers for all they do. Remembering everyone is important and has a part to play. I'll be grateful for the loud chatter on the bus home from town and the long walk to my friend's house. I hope they'll be a new normal. A time where we value community, being connected and just being alive. A time to love each other and appreciate what we took for granted just a few weeks ago. This is my hope for our future. And Rope Walk, Young People Leaders in the Lord's Prayer. Dear God in heaven, you are fantastic. Make earth more like heaven. Help us live your way here on earth, just like in heaven. Give us the food we need. Forgive us when we are not. Forgive those who are naughty to us. Help us keep out of trouble. Keep us away from the bad things. It is yours now and forever. Amen. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Amen.